Welcome back everyone. Today it is my pleasure to share something pretty cool with you guys. The folks at NVIDIA have teamed up with the team at Polars to create a GPU accelerated package for data scientists. The idea is that pretty much anything you'd want to use Pandas for, you can use Polars, but you can accelerate on the GPU and so it's going to be an order of magnitude faster. Now, they provided a bunch of resources for so-called influencers, but I'm just going to jump right into this Jupyter Notebook to show you guys how everything works. I'm going to leave a link in the description to NVIDIA's own announcement blog. I would advise you to check that out. So, of course, I've included instructions here for you guys to install this. I do recommend using your own virtual environment, activate it, and then install Polars. Of course, to run this notebook, you will need Jupyter, and for the data, here are two links. Uh, so this top link in particular is a data set that is 22 gigabytes in size and this is you know of course a non-trivial data set we're going to see how much data it has momentarily for plotting you're going to want to install hvplot uh, we'll see that in a moment of course the first thing to do is import polars and check your version so my understanding is that this demonstration works with polars version 1.5 if you get something like 1.7 Go back and reinstall Polars for the GPU, but make sure to put the dash dash uh, equal equal 1.5 uh, um, specifier in here to make sure you have the correct version. So let's load up our data set, collect the schema, meaning we're going to see exactly what we have in here. We have a bunch of different data fields like a customer ID, uh, strings, end dates, things like that. Let's take a, actually, an actual look at the data. And you can see that it is indeed a pretty decent collection of fields where we have 64-bit uh, integers, strings, 64-bit floating point numbers, um, as well as some dates. So it is a pretty broad variety of data types. Let's see how much we have exactly. Uh, so it looks like we have uh, 2 by 10 to the 10, so 20 billion or so rows of data, quite a bit. So we can uh, accelerate this on the GPU. It's not uh, vastly quick, quick or anything because it's a pretty fast operation on the CPU anyway. But we do that by passing in the engine equals GPU flag to the dot collect function. So uh, there are a couple of different engines. This is the default and it's generally recommended that you use the default engine. The idea here is that it will fail silently if it can't use the GPU for a particular operation because not all operations are supported on the GPU. If it can't use it, it will automatically fall back to the CPU. So it'll fail silently. If we want it to fail uh, loudly, if we want it to raise a fuss when it fails on the GPU, we can use this engine uh, to raise an issue when it fails. So they have this little note here that says that basically the first time you load data on the GPU, it's going to be a little bit slow because it has to load up a bunch of stuff in the background. And here we switched over to the different GPU engine. Had this failed, it would have triggered a warning for us. So this is all pretty trivial. Let's take a look at what happens. We want to do something actually useful. So the first question we can ask is which customers have the largest total transactions? And we can run this on the CPU and see how long that takes. Spoiler alert, it's a fairly lengthy process. Um, what we're going to do is sort by the amount in descending order, and we're going to aggregate it by that amount. And you can see that the wall time was about 10.8 seconds, so about 11 seconds, and it shows us our biggest spending customers. That's the total transaction volume, uh, total transaction amounts. Someone's spending, you know, a few million dollars. Let's take a look at how long that runs on the GPU. And you can see it's 743 milliseconds versus 10.8 seconds. That is oftentimes faster. And in fact, it's something like 13 times faster. But you can always ask the question, hey, uh, how do we know the results are the same? Well, we can use this assert to verify that they're in fact the same, and they are. And we have a more than 10x speed up getting the correct data. I call that a win. We can ask a... Uh, related question and say that this customer here, some string, has the largest total transaction volume, uh, but they may not have the largest single transaction. Let's find the biggest spender by single transaction. We run again, we once again run this on CPU and wait patiently for it to finish. I recommend getting a beverage. You do have some time. Once again, about 10.4 seconds, and we can see that the biggest spending customer is only something like $6,500 in one transaction. Okay, now running this on the GPU, let's see how long that takes. 761 milliseconds, not even a second. Once again, 
uh, it's identical results with a massive, massive speed up, something like 13x speed up using the GPU. Now, let's say you want to dig down into specific customers. You can do that as well. Um, you can say, for this particular customer ID, what's the max total spend? And you can see it's $6,200. And that only took about 600 or so milliseconds. Now, we can do the same thing on the GPU, and we get a little bit of a surprising result here. We can see that it's 700 milliseconds, which is generally fast, uh, excuse me, slower than 629 milliseconds. So what gives? I thought the GPU was amazing. Well, you have to keep in mind that not every task is run on the GPU. In fact, we have to collect data from our uh, storage system, in this case, an SSD or a hard drive, perhaps. And sometimes your um, performance can be I.O. bound, meaning input output bound. So it takes time to get data from the disk, and that time is much greater than the time it takes to process that data. And so it doesn't matter where you process the data, it's going to be um, bound by the amount of time it takes to fetch the data. So let's actually verify that by profiling our performance. And you can see that it spends 99%, 99.99% of the time actually fetching the data. The select statement itself only takes a tiny percentage of the time, not even 0.01%. So we can do something even more computational computationally intense, we can say what's the per month transaction amount for each category over time. Uh, we can want, run it on the CPU and see what we get. Uh, note that if it isn't clear, uh, the dot collect function is where we pass in the flag for where we want it to run. If we aren't specifying the GPU engine, it's going to run on the CPU by default. So this took 21.3 seconds of wall time. Okay, now on a GPU, let's see how fast that is. It is one second. So they advertise a 13x speed up, but for me, I'm getting 20x speed up, uh, at least for some operations. Uh, so this is pretty amazing stuff. And of course, one thing they want to really hammer home is interoperability. Um, so this is completely compatible with all the other Polar's operations. So if you want to do plotting, you can do that, assuming you have the HP plot package installed. And we can do some plotting here of some stuff. Now, uh, here we move beyond our single data set, and we check out uh, how the spend is related to rainfall, interestingly enough. Now here, honestly, I am a little leery because I tried this earlier and I get a GPU out of memory error because we're running with rather large data sets, 20 gigabytes or so. So let's see what happens. This may not work. So we have um, some other data to load. So we can use polars to load that and it comes from a CSV file. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we do get some weather data on Tatooine, of course. Um, and you see that there are floating point uh, numbers as well as 64-bit integers accompanied by string designators for the location. Let's see if these operations work for me. So we have our cleaned data. Um, so they weren't parsed as dates by the CSV reader. Uh, they're just parsed as, I guess, 64-bit uh, integers. So you can clean that up by typecasting um, and Polaris handles that for you using this particular command. Pretty pretty straightforward. So now we have to join these data sets together to get some idea about rainfall and spending. Let's see if this blows up for me. So it's running on the CPU, taking a little bit of time, and it took 12.8 seconds. Okay, now let's see how it runs on the GPU. This is where I'm expecting an issue. No, it ran right away. Interesting. So last night I had this, I was running this, and it gave me an error because I ran out of memory on my GPU. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so now let's demonstrate some more of the native plotting facilities by answering questions in a quote unquote more holistic fashion. So let's collect um, our data and sum by rainfall in, in, in inches and as well as our amount. And we can plot those two. Yeah, here's where it runs out of CUDA memory. I wonder if, hmm, I wonder if I get rid of this engine command and run it again. What will it do? So here, okay, it ran on the CPU. We didn't time it, but it did take some amount of time. I wonder if I do this engine equals GPU, if I'll get the same result, if it'll just 
No. Okay. So interesting. It does fail loudly. Okay. Um, interesting. So let's get rid of the engine equals GPU. And I guess the moral of this story is to just buy a better GPU. I'm running an RTX Titan. The other issue here, what I'm thinking is that this isn't a fault with Polaris itself. Rather, this is a fault of Jupyter. Now, one thing I really don't like about Jupyter Notebooks is that uh, they have persistent memory. So I can't just free up memory as I'm moving along unless I delete variables. It's a bit of a pain in the neck. So in reality, um, these as long as you unscoped or deleted these variables, you could get rid of those. You could free up that memory in principle, and so you wouldn't have an issue with GPU memory. Okay, so now you can see something interesting. When we plot this, the amount tends to oscillate. So now um, we're going to pass in the raise on failure equals false and see what we get. So let's run that. And it works just fine. Okay, so this has been a really quick demonstration. NVIDIA has some extra materials on their website, on their blog. I'm going to link to their GitHub as well, as well as a Google Colab link. If you don't have a local GPU, you can use this with Colab. Uh, of course, it is fully functional with Google Colab. Now, of course, on this channel, we don't do a whole lot of data science. We're mostly a reinforcement learning focused channel, but something like this, I do believe is incredibly powerful. And in fact, I can think of some use cases for this. So um, if you're dealing with offline data, let's say you're dealing with, say, some stock market data, you want to use your own implementation of Mu0 to make a trading bot, for instance, you want to, you know, beat the markets, you could use something like this to handle GPU acceleration of data manipulation, and that would pair very well with the deep reinforcement learning algorithm running on your GPU, of course. It would be much faster than relying on CPU. You can imagine if you have to wait 20 seconds for a single fetch operation to aggregate and kind of collate some data, that's going to be a problem for your reinforcement learning agent. So this is useful in RL, although not in the online case. I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have use cases for this, please let me know down in the comments. I'm always interested to know what you guys are doing in your own research and in your work. Upcoming videos are going to be back to reinforcement learning topics, so make sure to subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next video.